Hey guys, Matthew here once again. Uh, Peewee reveal just about to happen. Haven't fucking talked too much about it uh, up till now. And there have been a bunch of teasers and uh, slight indications as to what's going to happen with the new league. Uh, it's called Settlers of Calgar, which looks kind of like, um, you know, maybe some expedition action coming forth in a second way. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the teasers and uh, what we know so far. Basically the teasers uh, and what I think implications of each of those mostly are gonna be. Uh, so we'll just get over, you know, what's happening with them. Um, one big thing that everyone's kind of alluding to is that there might be a melee rework uh, because there's like dead totems, the, you know, um, ancestral style totems in every single teaser. And um, that might happen. Who knows? But the main thing that we would like to think is going to happen here is that melee will no longer be tied in to the um, damage multipliers you get from pressing both of those totems, thus revolutionizing melee gameplay uh, to not have to press totems in between packs for bosses, all that sort of stuff. Um, if that happens, that will, will actually like be a pretty big step towards melee uh, gameplay enjoyment. Uh, it could be as simple as just removing the buffs and then you no longer feel tied to having to do those. It could be more that um, they get built in somewhere else, uh, that sort of damage numbers. But there's you know a lot of people are alluding to whole melee rework, especially with some of the stuff that they're showing throughout those teasers. Um, so we could have like actual, you know, a different way of melee doing things. Maybe they got damage reduction, maybe, um, you know, range on weapon attacks is greatly enhanced. Who the fuck knows? Um, bunch of speculation for now, but yeah, by the looks of it, it could end up being a big patch. And um, just before we get into the teasers, I will say... PoE 2 is about to be a thing, right? With the um, beta um, coming soon. And that likely means that you want to have everything going well for PoE 1 and a big uh, resurgence for PoE 1 because recently as it's been, you know, further and further away for PoE 2 um, and leagues have been coming out, people are like just not caring that much about PoE 1 anymore. Um, and the leagues are kind of, you know, reflecting that uh, for the amount that people are playing. So yeah, it could be a huge league coming up soon as they try to build up um, the excitement for um, PoE 2 once again, since it should be here as a beta thing by the end of the year. So maybe a very large league for those reasons, um, but we'll find out very soon in a couple days or so. Um, in any case, let's get into the, some of these teasers and just what I think about some of this stuff. So um, hover any map on the Atlas, see what div cards drop in that map. That's a pretty sexy change, I think. Um, you know, it, it seems like just some nice quality of life that's going to be implemented in the game stuff like this that's going to hopefully not take you out of the game as much so if you want to find some things out um, you can just see those things in the game a lot of the other arpgs are starting to do this sort of stuff um, that are coming onto the market that are um, you know with some more modern um, quality of life and um, yeah here we hopefully following suit to take you less out of the game for plenty of information that you need holding alt over things, get some information. But in this case, um, div cards, and that is a pretty good thing. So it'll, it'll be like a lot easier for you to decide what kind of map you want to run. Or if you just got a choice of a few maps currently in your you know inventory, you just go, oh shit, this one could potentially drop that card. I might try and run a few of these. So that's cool stuff. I really like this one. Um, we then have uh, simulacrums have less waves and more opportunities for rewards. Now, this is a pretty um, interesting one, once again, that might have actual economic impact. Um, simulacrum waves go from 1 to 30. Conventionally, about 1 to 18 just kind of sucks and is a waste of time for almost every single build out there. It's not super challenging in today's format. Uh, and then the real stuff happens um, in those last few waves. Um, now those are going to be going away and it looks like they're going to start to get pretty spicy right from the start. So you, it doesn't look like you're going to be taking, um, average builds into simulacrum, um, pretty much ever, but it also means that the people that can farm these are going to farm these pretty hard, pretty fast. And, uh, it means that potentially simulacrums are going to be worth a little bit more to begin with. And I think, uh, what will end up happening is a lot of us are going to get to reap the rewards of this, uh, because they're also dropping more, um, boss items because uh, I think that means they're going to have more bosses in uh, these simulacrums so there's going to be more of the simulacrum items coming your way 
And I think what that means is you're going to get to play with split personalities quite a bit more, especially the more expensive ones like Strength Int. There's going to be more of those on the market. And you probably have your choice of megalomaniacs um, on the market to fuck around with on your build. All kinds of combos there. So that's pretty cool stuff. Maybe if you're into the voices as well, you got, you know, three passive voices might be cheaper than ever before. But um, yeah, this seems, seems like a pretty good change and also a good economic change for a lot of us. Uh, we got the bandit quest reward in act two getting changed. So, you know, usually you take two passives at this point because it's just way better than anything else. Um, but now they are splitting that up. So bandits will only potentially give you one passive if you don't side with any of this. And then you get one passive by doing the act two side quest for um, Fell Shrine. So... The bandit choice is less hugely meaningful, but I do think what this has done is uh, you do have an actual choice of these bandits for what your build might need. Because, yeah, these are pretty good things. One passive point for 40 life, 15 res or 8 movement speed. In almost all circumstances, you are willing to trade a passive point for any of those. Um, or if you really need the extra passive point, you take that. It's, it's a good change. My only issue with this, it's a bit of a bland change. Like, you know, this is a good chance to like do something cool with bandit rewards and um, something exciting. Instead, it's just, it's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> you know, especially as a teaser, a big teaser that came out, you're just like, yeah, that's, that's okay. But it could have been something cool. So I don't know, that's the only real issue there. Um, sixth map slot device. So we currently have five of these bad boys. Instead, they're giving us a sixth one. I guess as they realized with all the scarabs that they've been um, reworked and giving us, it's pretty juicy right now to have a lot of scarabs. And you might feel like you're missing out on certain scarab types or trying to run certain types of um, content in combination with scarabs so just another map slot device you will get one by running a tier 17 and one by doing a um these are just some of the prototypes that they're going to do and one by doing a maven 10 way so you get a fifth one pretty early on and the sixth one should be yeah quite challenging for most builds but you get there eventually hopefully so that's pretty good stuff as well it's a lot lot of um impact on juicing maps once again maps are going to be pretty fucking juicy um new blight oils so even more reason to farm blight blight is pretty good to farm already it's just whether or not you can be fucked doing it um especially blight tier maps and especially early into a league uh it's fairly lucrative to go into the oil farming business now they've got prismatic oils they're going to give you some more hidden anoints. I'm not really sure the purpose of hiding these anoints at this point. It just means you have to like go to POB to fucking look at these things and, you know, find out what you need to do. So it's just a bit annoying, but um, they potentially have some cool stuff. Uh, I don't know about this mine thing at all, but the elusive thing to me, that looks like a pretty good one. And also might hint at assassin getting either buffed in some way or reworked in some way but um yeah something like this an elusive change like this could actually be pretty impactful for either assassin or also for nightblade uh builds so that's pretty good as shit there but the take home is that yep um rainbow oil farming should be pretty lucrative and blight in general once again still pretty lucrative uh, the range you can pick up items in 3.25 has been increased this is a pretty big one and is Something that PoE has struggled with for many years now, as you have to pick up a lot of shit. And as you can see, this is the difference there. Um, your current pickup radius there, you now pickup radius there. This will make um, clicking and picking up fuck tons of things a lot easier and um, just a lot less painful. My only thing here is that this is so close to being insane if you also combine it with some of the loot tech of 2024 and just like making lots of stacks of things pick up at the same time so if you've got like 400 chaos orbs around you in single individual stacks clicking one should at this point suction them all to you um that's it's just like it's gone on long enough right there is so much stuff to pick up in poe nowadays with how juiced things can get and um mechanics and new league mechanics and stuff that it's it's about time that happens and if that happens then yeah looting is going to be just one of those things in poe that no longer has any issues pretty much and uh, is just a nice thing to do currently this thing is going to be huge i think this should already be a game changer but it feels like it's so close to going over that edge of um 
PoE loot no longer has an issue. We'll see. Maybe that's something on the horizon. It's still something a lot of people complain about. Um, pickup radius should be crazy and uh, should feel super good as well. Maybe even just like already a game changing change here that's going to make it feel like, like you're not even playing PoE anymore, which would be super good. Um, state static life bars sorry um this one this one's the poe2 tech coming our way already which is just fucking lovely to see so when you fight these bosses boom huge boss bar during that boss fight the biggest thing about this is it's going to be nice to always know what you're um doing even if the boss isn't on screen especially for builds that are a bit more not on screen in a defensive nature so we're talking like you know you put up a couple of Arc uh, arcanist brands or like storm brands and run away Get, being able to see the impact of your damage still while you're not near that boss and um doing things that way it's going to feel so good but just in general it's a huge quality of life change to um get to yeah get to see um what what a boss fight is basically um feeling like when you're anywhere on the arena um, and not have to like try and find the boss and you know figure out what what has happened there is the energy shield life bar back up is you know are you at fucking 80 percent or are you at fucking 85 percent whatever it's it's gonna be really nice i think um multiple of item quality so this one is instead of getting 20 percent increase to your um, weapons to begin with is going to be 20% more, likewise with the armor. So just pretty much a buff to, you know, um, weapon physical damage and um, armor. And uh, that might be already part of what's happening with melee. Who knows? Just stronger weapons. But um, that would also help for um, stronger bows, wands. So who knows? But um, that's kind of cool. Just a bit more damage and then likewise with this item quality change um, the quality that you apply to things with your scraps is now going to be based off of item level so when you're early into a game like use use the scraps as you see fit because your um, low level shit is going to get like almost 20 quality immediately if it's still very low level and then the higher level stuff is going to take a bit more quality stuff so you shouldn't feel too worried about using scraps in the early game the other teaser here is a larger item base night weave robe so potentially new item bases at the high end coming i'd assume something like tier 17 drops so that might make tier 17s more lucrative to run because of something like that and then maybe instead of having so much quantity and rarity tier 17s uh, might get toned down in that way and be more rewarding in another way i think that'd be cool to see um, but either way new item bases that might have um larger armor es that sort of stuff and uh, that's what we're seeing here so maybe just raw power creep maybe they tone things down in some other way stat squish mod squish who knows but currently we can see a new item base there Proximity waypoints, just run past the waypoint, get the waypoint. Nice little bit of quality of life, nothing too huge to talk about there. Um, pretty much you shouldn't ever miss a waypoint at this point um, because before sometimes you'd run past and not actually click it, but you thought you did, something like that. So a little bit of nice stuff there. Um, harvest quality of life, you don't have to click it twice now to activate it. Makes harvest just a little bit cleaner. Nothing too huge there. Still get completely dicked down by some pretty tough harvest mobs if your character's not quite ready for it but um yeah nice stuff and then reservation skills when you die um you no longer lose all of your auras and have to reapply them um when you zone back into a map which is pretty cool but um to be a bit of a contrarian here i don't know i didn't mind having to put your auras back on it did give you this distinct feel of life to death and um a reset up period to get back into your map and you know if you had a lot of auras yeah sure it was kind of annoying um having to because you probably didn't even have keys for all of them on your alternate buff bar um but yeah now it's just gonna be die get your you know click the thing and bam you're straight back in so it's gonna make graveyard zerging quite a bit more zergy uh which yeah maybe that's a good thing maybe not like i said to be a bit of a contrarian i think it was fine just clicking that stuff in a little bit of a cool off period after your death 
and uh, back in we go. Not a big deal. I think that was an okay thing. Now it's going to be a bit more zergy. That's fine too, but I'm not sure this needed to happen. Anyway, um, it did and cool. So that's so far all the teasers. Um, yeah, only another day or two till we actually get the thing, July 18th. Um, I will, of course, react to it. I'll probably dress up as um, a Jack Sparrow thing again because it might be a boat league and uh, we'll save a real cosplay for the day. But just another, another bit of a throwback to some boat action um, for now. Hopefully it's huge. Sales of the carrier. I would love to dig into another few months of POE. Um, and um, either way, I'm looking forward to all the stuff that's coming. It seems like it could be a big one. Here's hoping. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.